Hello everyone, this is a quick introduction to my IKFK snapping add-on that will allow you to match IK controls to FK controls and vice versa. So you can allow your custom rig to basically have IKFK matching abilities. So I'm gonna go over the features of the add-ons and how to use it now. First off, make sure you've installed the add-on. You can get the IKFK snapping add-on script either from my GitHub page linked below uh, or from my Gumroad. And just make sure to go edit, preferences, install, and go ahead and find the script and install it. And do you do need to make sure, of course, that it's enabled first. I'm running a local development copy, so I'm not going to enable that. Now, the add-on lives in your 3D viewport in the side properties panel. So you can use the N key to open this, or you can click and drag from the side to open that. And down the bottom, you're going to have a button that says FK slash IK snap. And that's going to be the shelf that contains the panels and the tools for this add-on. Uh, I'm just gonna unpin a couple of these. All right, so to start off with, there are two panels. There is the IKFK bones panel where you set up all of the bones for a limb that is required in order to perform the snapping operation. And there's the actual IK to FK snapping panel, which will perform the snap either from IK to FK or vice versa. So I'm gonna clear these just to make sure it's as nice and empty to start off with. So to begin, first select your armature. Now, in this case, when you click on one of these fields, it will show you all, um, in this case, all armatures. We're going to pick armature because that's one we are using in pose mode at the moment. And you'll have to set up all the bones for the FK and IK chains. So in this case, FK upper and lower and end are simply going to be your FK controls. Let's actually just put that back into FK mode for the moment so we can see that. Yeah, so those are our FK controls. Yep, so those are the ones we're going to enter in. So I'm just going to type FK, and we're going to do the left arm to start off with. So FK forearm, and that's going to be uh, hand, so that's going to be control FK hand. Now for the IK bones, uh, first off you want to enter in the actual bones that your IK control will be manipulating. So in this case, your IK control will be the one you move around. Uh, as well as the pole vector to change the direction the chain points in. But we want to first enter in the actual bones that are used as part of that. So I'm just going to go ahead and unhide my layer that has all the IK bones on it. So actually you can see as I scrub through, those are kind of still stuck in world space at the moment. Um, except for one that I've done earlier. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, maybe delete those. Jumping ahead a little bit and just delete those keyframes and let's just make sure everything is nicely yeah there we go it's a little bit better all right so yeah as you can see those are just locked in world space and not moving around so to start off with let's see that is our yep so for me that is my mch ik arm and then if i actually just type forearm mch forearm now for the ik end this is most likely going to be the same IK control that you use for moving around the actual limb. Uh, in this case, because I move my IK around using my control IK arm, I'm going to enter that in. So control IK arm. Now this is also most likely going to be the same bone that is your IK effector. So the effector is the bone that actually moves the whole chain around. So that's usually this bone that we move around in world space to move the whole chain around like so i'm gonna give it a little bit of stretch there we go like that so let's go ahead and enter that in there and finally we want to set the pole vector so the pole vector of course is the bone that we use uh in order to tell the chain which direction to move in so we just move that back a little bit like so you can see it's pointing towards that pole vector and that's control IK arm pole. So let's go ahead and that's going to be pole, control IK arm pole. All right. So it's going to reset those positions. Once we've done that, we want to go ahead and save this as a limb. So it would kind of be a little bit annoying if we had to keep sort of entering in the bones every single time we wanted to perform a snap where when we're animating, we want to quickly 
be able to switch between limbs as needed. So if we go into the upper hand corner, we can see there's a button here that says limb presets. And if we click on that, I'm just gonna get rid of some ones I made previously. Uh, we can go ahead and type in the name of the limb that we are wanting to save. So in this case, arm.l and hit enter and then hit the plus arrow and we've saved ourselves a preset. So I'm gonna quickly actually do the right arm as well, just by going in and changing the suffix at the end for my controls. Uh, this is just how I've named my controls. I also recommend you do the same thing, whether or not you use the word left or right or a dash, it's up to you. I use dot L and dot R. So I'm gonna go ahead and now save that as arm dot R, hit enter, hit the plus arrow. And now I can toggle between my two presets. Let's go back to the left arm. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. I'm just gonna hide my IK where yeah, we don't need to see those. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on snap IK to FK now. And as you can see, it's snapped our IK effector control to the end of the, well, where the FK is currently located. And it's also snapped our pole vector basically in a line from the elbow. So if we just draw a line from that, you, what basically what it does is it draws a line through the elbow and that's where our pole vector is going to be uh, attached to. That's all fine. Whoops, maybe I'll snap that again. Okay, uh, of course, however, you can see that only does this on one frame. Like if you wanted now at this point, of course, to you know have this sort of follow along, you would, e you would need to bake this animation in. Or in this case, maybe let's say if we were doing this to the leg and we wanted to keep the leg in position, we would need to set a keyframe on the leg at that stage so that the IK control would stay locked in space. However, if you want to bake this in across an actual frame range, we can go ahead and use our other option here, which is key across frame range. So what I'm going to do now is, let's see, my, yeah, my online animations will set up properly this time. I'm going to click key across frame range. In this case, I've set in 0 to 750 for the whole frame range of my animation. And I'm going to click snap IK to FK. And this takes a couple of seconds to process. And there we go. Go back and play. And there we go. Our IK controls are now directly snapped to the FK controls and those are now keyed over time. So at the moment we still of course have the FK skeleton sort of influencing our character. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dial that back. So now we're in IK mode on our character. So we're influencing it with our IK bones instead of our FK bones. As we move back to forwards, you can see that that arm there, still moving pretty accurately, even though it's moving entirely in IK mode. So it does mean now, of course, we could go in and you know add any tweaks or stuff that we need to on that actual joint using the IK control. Just like that. Of course, it's going to snap back, so I need to set an animation. Um, and at that stage, I would recommend maybe if you wanted to make, say, adjustments or whatnot, you use something like the nonlinear animation editor uh, in order to make, say, corrective adjustments to your IK. Um, basically on a non-destructive layer on top of your base animation. In this case, because I'm using motion capture, that makes sense for me. Uh, if you're hand animating everything, you just want to snap your IK to your FK controls, so you're switching between them and you want to save some time, then you probably don't need to do the baking of the keyframes. Okay, uh, let's just go here, and I'm just going to do the other arm at the same time, and I'm going to bake that as well. And let's go, yep, so now my arm is in IK mode. And just to play through, have a quick check. Yeah, so that's all cool. See, that's all looking pretty nice. Neat. All right. So one more thing is how about we actually do the inverse? Let's actually go ahead and snap our FK to our IK. So to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go to a frame or so and like there and let's just go ahead and delete the keyframes on my controls so they don't move around anymore and yep so that should say stay in place so you can see that's still kind of moving around a bit like so um so let's go ahead and what we want to do 
is maybe sort of adjust where the arm is positioned and we want our FK controls to match. Now these are already set up ready to go because we've set up all of our mapping so we don't need to touch those. So if I go snap FK to IK instead, whoops, I baked that, I shouldn't have done that. I'll just remember to go back to frame 249. Okay, problem solved there. Basically, just be careful when you are using the FK to IK snapping. Uh, if you key across a frame range and at any point, maybe the IK is maybe stretched out a little bit too far, especially if you're using like IK stretching, then you might end up with that scenario where it's actually scaled the FK bones as well, um, which is not ideal, but that will be fixed in a future release. So yeah, if I turn that off though and I go snap FK to IK, yeah, there we go. So we can see our... FK skeleton now snapping to our IK as well. Okay, so um, yeah, we can change our presets there as well. So if we want, actually, when we're animating, uh, we can go ahead and maybe say, go ahead and pin this panel. And let's say I'm going around and you know stick to my bones and playing around with whatever I'm doing in maybe on the item panel um, or anything else that we have. For example, I like to use a little rig UI panel here so I can change my different layers and things. Uh, yeah, but now, of course, you can have all your rig controls ready to go. And at any point, if you need to say, go, all right, I need to snap my control. We always have this up here and we can just go ahead and make sure we're on the right limb and we can go ahead and snap our controls like so. Anyway, so that's the add-on. I hope that it is useful for you. If there are any comments, then please leave them on uh, either my Gumroad page or if there are any issues or bugs, please leave them on my GitHub page so I can sort of improve the script further. And I hope this works well for you. Anyway, see you later.